Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. This video is part of a playlist that aims to explore networking protocols with the help of devices that you can find easily, such as the ESP32 and Raspberry Pi. In this video, we will take a look at Bluetooth Low Energy, or BLE for short, and examine its working principle. And in the next video, we will be implementing what we have learned th through this video through the help of a simple sketch. This video will be split into three main sections. We will first introduce Bluetooth Low Energy and compare it to the classic Bluetooth. We will also define the BLE stack. We'll then take a look at the generic attribute protocol layer or GAT and the generic access profile or GAP which are part of the BLE protocol stack. Bluetooth is a wireless technology that allows devices to communicate with each other over short distances using radio waves. It was originally designed for use cases in audio devices such as headphones and speakers, but has since been used in a variety of other applications such as internet connectivity. Technically, Bluetooth is a frequency hopping radio technology that transmits data packets. Frequency hopping, also known as frequency hopping spread spectrum or FHSS, is a state-of-the-art method for transmitting radio signals where carriers rapidly switch among many different frequency channels. Bluetooth uses this technology within the 2.4 gigahertz band. These packets conduct data exchanges through one of the designated Bluetooth channels. Bluetooth Low Energy hit the markets in 2011 and it's a wireless personal area network technology designed and marketed by the Bluetooth Special Interest Group or Bluetooth SIG and it is aimed for applications in healthcare, fitness, security, and home entertainment. When comparing BLE with classic Bluetooth, BLE has been designed with the intention of providing a considerably reduced power consumption and cost while maintaining a similar communication range. Bluetooth, or classic Bluetooth, and Bluetooth Low Energy, or BLE, both operate in the 2.4 gigahertz band. Bluetooth, however, can, can transmit a lot of data at a time, and that makes it quickly consume its battery life. This makes it more practical for applications that are designed to broadcast media, such as Bluetooth-enabled headsets, speakers, and keyboards. However, unlike classic Bluetooth, Bluetooth Low Energy remains in sleep mode unless a connection is initiated. The actual connection time only lasts for a few milliseconds. And in that few milliseconds, a small amount of data transfer happens, rather than it being constantly active. Therefore, BLE is used for applications that do not need to exchange large amounts of data and can run on battery power at a cheaper cost. These technologies are independent of each other and have no compatibility, but the two protocols can be used and supported by one device through the use of the Bluetooth 4.0 specification, which allows devices that follow this standard to implement either systems on the device. Now let's take a look at the functionality of this protocol. The BLE protocol is structured in a stack that is composed of three main blocks. These blocks are the controller, which is in the color gray, the host, which is in the color blue, and the app, which is in the color green. The host communication interface, or HCI for short, is designated by the color red and it interfaces the communication between the controller and the host. The rectangular frames represent the different layers of the protocol and they are ordered in a stack. 
which starts at the bottom from the physical layer and ends at the higher level, which is the application layer. You can see that on both sides of the stack are two arrows that show the direction of encapsulation and fragmentation. Encapsulation is when raw data, which is acquired from an antenna, is consequently an encapsulated in a standard BLE packet. On the other side, or on the right side, the BLE packet that shall be sent by a transmitter is fragmented in a raw data format and then managed by the physical layer. This video will present these layers briefly, but will focus on the gap and GAT aspects of the BLE protocol. The first layer that we will observe is the physical layer. The BLE technology is designed to operate in the industrial, scientific, and medical band, which includes the 2.4 to 2.5 gigahertz. In particular, the BLE radio band goes from 2.4 gigahertz to 2.4835 gigahertz, and it is divided into 40 channels, as seen in the figure. These channels have a center frequency which can be calculated using this equation where k is the values from 0 to 39 for each respective channel. Three of these channels, which are the 37th channel, the first one, then the 38th channel and the 39th channel are reserved for advertising packets which are used to make sure that nearby devices know that this BLE device is, is available, while the others are used to exchange data packets in connections that have been established. To avoid interference and fading with other wireless communication devices in the same radio band, such as devices that use Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, the classic Bluetooth, Bluetooth Low Energy, implements the frequency hopping technology that we talked about earlier. The second layer is the link layer, which is the part of the stack that directly interfaces with the physical layer. And it is a combination of both hardware and software parts. This layer defines the type of communication that can be created between a BLE device and another BLE device. And it defines the roles that the, this device can play which either is a master, slave, advertiser, or scanner. The third layer of this protocol is the host controller interface, and it is a standard protocol that takes care of the communication between the controller and host. The controller is the lowest part of the protocol, and the host is the core of the BLE protocol stack, which manages the communication between the hardware and the user application. Therefore, its role is to define a set of commands and events that translate this raw data that we acquire from the lower part of the protocol or the controller into data packets and send them via serial port to the host layer and vice versa. Logical link control and adaptation protocol layer or the L2 cap layer acts as a multiplexer which either takes the data from lower layers and encapsulates them into a standard BLE packet format, or does the opposite of fragmenting that standard BLE packet format into data that is handled at lower layers. Then we have the security manager protocol layer, which is composed of several security algorithms that encrypt and decrypt data packets. We also have the attribute protocol layer, which defines how a server exposes its data to its clients and how that data is structured. Data in this layer is structured into attributes. First, let's take a look at the first function of this layer, which is defining the role of the client server architecture. There are two roles in this attribute protocol. We have the server or the client. The server exposes the data it controls and accepts commands from paired devices, where, whereas clients interface with the server with the purpose of reading the server's data or controlling its behavior. The, a device can act as 
a server or client or as both. This layer also performs data organization into things called attributes. Attributes are made up of handles, which are a 16-bit unique identifier, a universally unique identifier or attribute type known as the UUID, a value and a set of permissions such as read-write permissions. Now let's take a look at the GAT or generic attribute profile. This layer or this protocol defines the way that two BLE devices transfer data back and forth. And it does that with the notion of services and characteristics. Essentially, what this protocol or layer does, it essentially takes and encapsulates the attributes that were created at the attribute layer or attribute protocol and stacks or combines or groups similar attributes into a notion or a concept known as a service. And these attributes are then called characteristics of the service. And each of these characteristics is used to communicate a specific type of data. Let's take a closer look at what GAT does. First, we have the profile. The profile is a predefined collection of services that has been defined either by Bluetooth SIG or is defined by a device designer. And this will get clearer when we observe an example. Essentially, they are the standard collection of services for a specific use case. A service is basically a container that groups related attributes from the attribute protocol layer that are related to each other. And these attributes will then be the characteristics of that service. And each characteristic is essentially a type of data that we would like to communicate through this service. Each service and characteristic have a unique, or universally unique identifier. If it's predefined by Bluetooth SIG, it will be 16 bits long. And if it's custom, it's going to be 128 bits long. Characteristics, which are essentially attributes, will contain the data value, the descriptor, and some properties. These properties indicate to the client that will receive this information that they are allowed to perform these set of operations on this characteristic. They can either broadcast, which means it allows sending data to BLE devices using advertising packets, which we will talk about in a few um, more slides, or it can be readable, meaning that if set, the client can only, if a communication has been set, the client can only read the characteristics value. Writable, this property means that the client can only write a new value onto this characteristic, or notifiable, which means when a communication has been established, the client receives a notification if the server updates this characteristic so, it, so that it can only read the new value. Let's observe an example to further understand what we mean by profiles, services, characteristics, and, and the sub, sub let's say, categories of these characteristics in a GAT protocol. Let's say we, would, we have a device, a BLE device, that has an IMU sensor, which essentially has gyroscope readings and accelerometer readings. It also has a battery monitor onto it, meaning that it can also uh, transmit data of the status of the battery. Since the IMU sensor readings are the same, we can group them into one service called the IMU readings which will contain the gyroscope reading and the accelerometer reading. And both these attributes will be the characteristics of the service IMU readings. Each characteristic has, its, has a property, a descriptor, and a data value. The property for these two characteristics will be notifiable since the IMU will constantly 
update, it will change. The value of these sensor readings will change. Therefore, the type of property, the this this service, or let's say this characteristics, or these characteristics will have is the notifiable property. Now let's also take a look at the other sensor that we have in this device. It's the battery reading or status. So we will also have another service that the, the IMU device server profile has, which will have the attribute of or characteristic of the battery status. And this characteristic has a data value, a descriptor, and a property known as notifiable, since also the battery status will change. Now that we have observed how data is sent using the GAT or generic attribute profile, let's take a look at how Bluetooth devices can uh, advertise or create these connections with the help of the generic access profile or GAP. The generic access profile or GAP for short controls the connections and advertising in Bluetooth or BLE. GAP is what makes the BLE device visible to the outside world and determines how two devices can or can't interact with each other. GAP defines various rules for devices, but there are two essential rules that we need to understand, and they are the essential devices and the peripheral devices. Peripheral devices are small, low-power, resource-constrained devices that can connect to much powerful central devices. Peripheral devices can be things like the IMU sensor that is BLE-enabled, that we talked about earlier, or a BLE-enabled heart rate monitor, for example. And central devices are either the mobile phone or tablet that allows you to connect to these sensors. And these central devices usually have more processing power and memory. And the way these two devices can connect is through advertising with GAP. BLE devices either advertise using the advertising data payload or the scan response data payload. The advertising data payload will, const will be constantly transmitted out of the device to let the central devices in range know that this peripheral device exists. However, the scan response payload is a payload that central devices can use to request uh, information about, peripheral, about the availability of peripheral devices. The way this works is a peripheral will set a specific advertising interval where every time this interval passes, it will transmit its main advertising packet. This is to let to allow uh, uh, neighboring devices to know that there is a peripheral device available. However, if a listening device is interested in the scan response payload, it can request that payload and the peripheral will respond with additional data. Once a connection has been established between a peripheral device and a central device, the advertising process will stop and, with, and typically what will happen is the GAT services and characteristics will be used to communicate in both directions. Thank you for watching this video. If you found this video useful, consider subscribing or supporting the channel through Patreon, where the link for it is in the description below. And as always, thank you for watching.